On this episode of Mudhole TV, Big Show Terry Scroggins hosts a tour of his home waters and his best spots for spec fishing. The MLF Pro wastes no time putting his MHX Ultra Light Rods to work and shows the team exactly why he is the professional. Back at the dock, he invites the whole gang back for an old-fashioned Big Show fish fry. Sharing his years of experience, both on and off the water, this is one episode you don't want to miss. Hey guys, Taylor here with Mudhole Custom Tackle. We're out here on the beautiful Crescent Lake, just off the St. Johns River. Out here looking for some crappy with a guy you may have heard of. It's actually our MLF pro, Terry Scroggins. What's up, Taylor? What's up, Terry? How are we feeling today? I'm good, man. This is one of my favorite things to do when I come home from off tour is, is come crappie fishing. Oh, man. Speck fishing, sockeye, whatever you want to call them, we call them slabs because we're going to catch some big old crappie today. I love to hear it. Thanks for having <laughs> us out today. Cool. You know what's, what's the best deal is have a lot of fun doing it. Absolutely. Learn a lot about your electronics doing it. Absolutely. Then go home and let the fish meet the grease. So that's the cool thing. I can't wait for that. <laughs> so we're about to head out. We're going to try and catch some slabs, as Terry calls them, so we can release these fish in the grease. Can't wait to see what these MHX ultralights can do. Here we go. We just come down the lake. Um, this is a dock that always it holds a lot of shade, has a lot of bait on it, and as you can see, there's a lot of crappie on it as well. So uh, they're suspended, and that always makes them a little harder to, to make bite when they're suspended up through the water column. But we'll figure out the right depth, and the right cadence, and, and make these things bite here in a minute. You skipping these under? Oh yeah, there's like 500 of them under this dock. You just like slow jigging it? Yeah, the best thing to do is let it go to the bottom and just crank your reel about three turns and bring okay. it up off the bottom. Hold your line tight, let it pendulum one back down. Oh, there we go. That's so good. What you call a slab right here. Get on in here, let's meet the grease. Mm-hmm. Whew. You get your 40 or 50 of them right there. Little Zatarans and some Obey, and you got something. He wasn't coming off. Made a little bait adjustment. Moved to a little heavier jig head with a curly tail instead of a, a straight tail. First cast. So anyway, when you're out here bass fishing, I probably got, I don't know, 30, 40 boxes of tackle. When I come crappie fishing, this is it. That's all you need. Jig heads, a few bodies. And uh, I normally use that one color right there. It's the clear or white. And if I want to change the color, I can dip it in chartreuse. So I got two colors in one. And that's all you ever need when you come crappie fishing. It's about pretty much that one color. Anyway, where I crappie fish at, anyway. So, I normally use a 32nd ounce jig head. This is a 16th, so uh, we got a little current. So I just moved up a little bit on the uh, on the weight just because of the current. Slide this old curly tail on there. And the reason I'm doing that is, is these crappie in here are suspended. So I'm swimming it through them, through the water column instead of dropping it through them. So, that's why I went and tried a curly tail. Seemed to work on the first cast. We're gonna see how it works out from here on out. You ever get a bass on accident on one of these? Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll catch one in the basin, probably. <laughs> it pulled it right up for you. Woo! One for the grease, Guff. That's right. One for the grease there. <laughs> Just doing what Terry told me, you know? <laughs> this one big enough to keep or no? Yeah. All right. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. I think we just found them right here. Catching some little ones and some big ones. And there's a bunch of them in the shade right here on this dock. So uh, sometimes you just got to weed through the little ones. We're not going to keep that one, but there's some really big ones in here, big ones in here as well. How many y'all caught? Uh, zero. How many bites y'all had? Zero. All right. Y'all putting her to the dock? Yeah. I'm too busy dealing with a boat that I don't ever run. Oh, I got you. Okay, so I, I kind of determined this real quick. When you bring people out here crappie fishing, 
you bring some of them to fish docks. If they can't skip docks, then you go fish pilings. So I think we're going to go fish some pilings. You tell me I can't skip a dock, Terry. <laughs> so we're out here skipping docks. Uh, Terry's boat caught quite a few. The mud hole boat here is struggling a little bit. So we're going to move off to a piling. Because uh, some of us can't skip docks as well as an MLF pro. So we're going to see if we can't make it a little easier on ourselves, see if we can catch some slabs. What I do, if you want to stand on the front with me, yeah. we can look at them on live scope when we see right where they are. Okay. And then you can cast to the sides of them on there. Itty bitty one. Little ones are wanting to bite today. Yeah, go old, old, old begging down there. Wasn't a big one. We got our first one in the boat. We're gonna let this one swim for another day and see if we can't find something a little bigger. So we're basically just going down the lake right now, just kind of fishing docks and pilings, uh, whatever we come across. And yeah, I can see a bunch of them on live scope. For whatever reason, they're not wanting to bite yet. But it seems like the higher the sun gets, the hotter it gets, the, the tighter they'll get to these docks and pilings, and, and the better they bite. So. We'll keep running around, we'll, we'll get into them here in a minute, catch a bunch of them. What's cool about the Garmin Live Scope is, is when they're not biting, you can still see them there, you know they're there. So you can keep fishing for them. If, if we didn't have that, we'd have no idea the fish was here and it would just be, you know, out here in the blind. So uh, we'll keep after them, keep making some, some bait adjustments and find out what they want, we'll figure them out and catch them. Right, I'm sucking that button here. There we go. Don't boat flip a two pounder. <laughs> <laughs> that's there, that's borderline of, of reaching down there and grabbing them or, or boat flipping. So. Oh, we'll catch a few, how about you? Oh, we're, you know, it's a little slow over on the mud hole boat, but we're no pros like you. <laughs> what do you mean by slow? <laughs> I mean, we ain't catching them. Define slow. <laughs> like zero? Oh, no, we got a couple in the boat. Do we got you? a couple in the well. We'll be able to contribute to lunch. Ah, how big are they? Big enough. We'll see one of them. Well, you see, you know, my live boat's on the back of the boat. I'm on the front of the boat. Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's a long walk for me, Terry. Uh-oh. That's why Terry fishes professionally. That's like borderline right there, but being because none of our other guys are going to catch any today, they'll probably appreciate that one. Well, we've been out here for a couple of hours, and we've caught a few, but seeing a whole lot of them, it's underneath these docks and pilings and they're just not eating for whatever reason. So we're gonna pick up, move to Lake George. There's a bunch of good spots down there. I feel confident we can catch up down there. So that's where we're going right now. So we're out here searching for crappy. We trailered the boats, jumped over to a new lake, trying to find some big slabs. We're gonna see if we can catch them. Let's see if we can get one right here. Good one right there. How about that one? <laughs> Fishing's all about decisions. It don't matter what you're fishing for. This morning we started off at Crescent Lake and we saw a bunch of them just like we have here, but we couldn't make them bite. We come out here to this lake and pull up the first spot and it's on. Where y'all going? I don't know. You know, a lot about fish is boat control. That's why you're a pro, Terry. If you can set on the spot, you can catch them. You do know I'm just a graphic designer, right? We got one that's gonna meet the grease right here. Not a giant, but an eater. An eater. What number is that on the day? That's number, I don't know, it's number four on this spot right here in about the four minutes, so. Yeah. See that right there? Another one meets the grease. All right, boys, we gotta step it up. Hey, don't worry. They sell bread where we're going to. Don't worry, baby. You got That's it. why I came out here with you. <laughs> they just wanted me to drive a boat. They didn't say I had to fish. 
There we go. So we came down to the bottom end of the lake. It's a spot that I've caught my, you know, a bunch. And had a little rainstorm blowing up behind us on the north end, so I figured we'd run down here and just kind of get away from it. And give us a bite a little time, see which way it's going to go, see what, see what we need to do. But you can catch these, these crappie the whole way around this lake. It don't really matter what end or what set of pilings you're on. They're, they're pretty much on all of them. So just kind of running from weather right now. There's one right there. And uh, see what happens. That looks fun. Yeah. Well, every afternoon down here in Florida, we always get you know some storms blow up around three o'clock. Oh, and guess what time it is? It's three twenty. And here comes two big ones. We got bomber fires coming across the lake. So we're gonna duck in here to the spring, let this blow over, go fire the grease up, see what happens. When you're looking for the perfect ultralight or light tackle setup, you have to check out the spinning series from MHX Rod Blades. They are specifically designed with technology through MHX for the angler that prefers all of the light and ultralight spinning applications. So dial in your next build with blanks like the S661. That's five six in length. It is a fast action with an ultralight power and it is perfect for catching crappie, or if you call them specks, or walking around a local farm pond for other panfish. Or choose the S842, which is one of my personal favorites. It comes in at seven foot in length. It's a fast action with a light power, and that'll help you land anything from big crappie, big bluegill, bass, and even trout. It even comes in a two piece, so it's travel ready, and 14 metallic colors to get your custom build popping. So these are just two of my favorite models out of the spinning series from MHX. This series incorporates 15 different models that has a wide range of lengths, powers, and actions to fit any of your light to ultralight applications. So see why these MHX blanks are some of the best in the industry. Run over to mudhole.com slash spinning and check them out today. Narrowly escaped a storm today in the pursuit of big slab crappie with our very own MLF Tour Pro, Big Show Terry Scroggins. We absolutely got the job done today. Caught a ton of slab crappie. A lot of fun. A how, lot many of think, fun. how many do you think we caught today? I don't know. We'll count them when we clean them. We'll fix to get the saws all out. Just, just count them as we go. Oh man, I can't wait to get those suckers in the grease. <laughs> I can't either. I'm hungry. I'm excited. So we've been doing this a long time. Going out with my buddies, having a lot of fun catching crappie, speck, cycle life, slabs, whatever you want to call them. But when you come in and you got a hundred of them, you don't want to sit there and clean them with a regular knife. So we've learned that. We tried electric knives, we tried every kind of knife there is. But we've come across this rigid sawzall and they actually make a, a fillet saw. So it actually fits the sawzall. This thing is no joke. I'm talking about you can clean a fish in a couple of seconds with a sawzall. So that's the go-to. Terry's out here filleting with the uh, the magical sawzall. I'm just his rib man. I'm just out here cutting ribs. You gotta have a rib man when you do this. Always gotta have a rib man, and I'm happy to be Terry's today. We got a bowl full of crappy. I cannot wait to fry them up. You know, when it comes to frying fish. I use all kinds of different batter, House of Autry, Zatarins, McCormick's, it don't really matter. Especially when you're cooking crappie or flounder, you know, a really white fish. The secret to it all is in the sauce, the dipping sauce. One stick of butter, 10 ounces of honey, and I just kind of free pour it, but I know just how much we need. And the neat thing about this, when you make this, it's good for two or three times of eating. So I just ran out, so I'm gonna make some fresh. So it's one to one, <clears throat> that'll pepper and honey, and a stick of butter. That right there is the bomb. That's the secret.
Well, Terry, I think we nailed the old uh, catch, clean, and cook today. There's not a funner thing to do for me to go out there with my buddies, hang out, use some MHX ultralights, and catch some crappie, specs, sockeye, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> we call them slabs. Come home, they all taste clean the them same up. In the grease. Yeah, it don't get no better than this. <laughs> we can't thank you enough for your hospitality today. Learned a lot, we caught a lot, and now we're eating a lot. It's good times. Can't get any better. Well, for Mudhold TV, I'm Taylor. And this is Big Show Terry Scroggins signing out. Thanks, guys. See you next time. See y'all next time.